Though many are unaware of the many atrocities faced by incarcerated people in jails and prisons, many overlook the issues that seem smaller to scale. Today, we will discuss the importance of mailing rights for incarcerated people by doing a specific case study on mailing censorship in North Carolina. In North Carolina, but also nationally, incarcerated people lack the ability to receive mail in a way that is just and protects their First Amendment rights. And in the case that they do receive mail, they often lack the ability to keep the mail, read their mail for longer than short periods and intervals of time, and they also have the inability to read the mail repeatedly. Additionally, they're restricted to the type of mail that they are able to receive. For example, some incarcerated people are unable to receive books in the mail, with even something as simple as a padded envelope leading to their inability to receive mail. In many states, incarcerated people are given scanned copies of their mail, which those that are sending the mail must pay for, to which they are permitted to view on a device for, again, a limited period of time upon the letter's review by the jail or prison. To many, this may seem insignificant, which is why you may ask, why are mailing rights so important for incarcerated people? The ability to receive mail allows for incarcerated people to obtain sentimental reminders that they are cared for and loved, allowing them to feel connected to their loved ones on the outside. The unnecessary rules and regulation that leads to inabilities to access can cause incarcerated people to feel more disconnected, and discouraged and more susceptible to ment the mental turmoil that for many is inevitable while incarcerated. It also allows them to stay informed about the world going on around them. For example, in subscription to magazines, zines, and or other things that allow them to remain updated on current events. So consider magazines like Prisonality that write to incarcerated people in their interests and without mailing rights, Prisonality would be unable to exist. The ability to receive mail also allows for incarcerated people to receive adequate and confidential legal counsel as legal counsel comes through mail for some. So since I explained some context behind mailing rights, it's important to ask ourselves what are the current concerns of mailing for incarcerated people? First is censorship, the censorship of magazines and publications sent to prison facilities, so specifically those that target, target political awareness for incarcerated people. Second is privacy, the privacy of inmates and their mail, prisons and prison guards, creating restrictions that necessitate the opening and surveillance of its mail and thus strip them of their personhood and their right to privacy. Additionally, mail scanning and datification of mail via forms like smart communications, JPEG, text behind, et cetera, that cause mail to lose personal sentimental value through the inability to for this mail to be personalized and be given to incarcerated people physically, um, which is of particular high importance to incarcerated people and contributes to increased feelings of like, um, isolation from loved ones and can worsen mental health. And there are rising concerns about privacy in these private companies having access to private letters with sensitive information on incarcerated people and their families. So there is also a concern of datification and um, there. So what is specifically happening in North Carolina? The government has put restrictions on any sort of mail that could be seen to cause violence, insurrection, or terrorist slash gang activities against individuals, in groups, organizations, the government, or any of its institution. Anything that seems to be anti-government often falls within this category, leading to a lot of censored content concerning political education, which of course concerns incarcerated people because in many ways they are political subjects and their existence within jails and prisons are political. This is especially concerning for publications that have consider, concerned themselves with educating incarcerated people and also fighting it against syst systemic issues slash violations of their rights. Publications like Prisonality and like Prison Legal News and Criminal Legal News. So in North Carolina, Prison Legal News and Criminal Legal News were newspaper publications that were distributed, that reported criminal justice issues and jail and prison litigation 
which of course affect incarcerated people directly. And for many years, starting from 2019, the news publication has reported um, instances of censorship, specifically in North Carolina prisons. So in 2021, the Human Rights Defense Center, which is associated with prison legal news, filed a lawsuit with evidence against the North Carolina Department of Adult Correction of the wrongful and unjust censorship of the prison publications, prison legal news and criminal legal news, um, which provided ample evidence of this, again, ranging from 20, the years 2019 to 2021, with claims from the DAC that the publications that can be reasonably documented contain threats to insist institutional safety and security. The lawsuit suggests that censorship in North Carolina violate incarcerated people's constitutional rights, like the First Amendment, which ensures their right to communicate and to receive mail, and also the 14th Amendment, which requires publishers to receive notice of restrictions and gives them permission to challenge mailing restrictions, which was not followed by the DAC in North Carolina. Um, it also required, the lawsuit also called for checks and balances on the publication reviews committees, which oftentimes violates the privacy privacies and unjustly sur surveils the mail of incarcerated people um, and are often responsible for reviewing withheld publications and deciding if the publication will be delivered. Despite the admission from the DAC and its employees of its wrongful censorship, the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of North Carolina issued for a mere prohibition of further censorship and issued further in investigation on the issue, though there still lacks legal precedent in North Carolina that recognizes the issue of mailing publication censorship and its impacts on incarcerated people and their own personal education, which is obviously an injustice. Mailing rights are a crucial aspect of receiving education, maintaining relationships and a sense of personhood and decent mental health, and also is important in the advocacy for incarcerated people. We must stand with and for incarcerated people against mailing publication in North Carolina, as well as for mailing rights nationally.